Okay. This isn't how this normally starts. No, this is weird. There's all these fancy decorations around. Yeah, there's no one else. It's just us. Wait, I think I figured it out. Yeah? It's the award show. You're right. And I, I came dressed for the occasion and everything. It's just, how can I forget? You Here, know? You know what? And for you, we're going to tell you what awards we got going on tonight so that you know. Oh, yeah. What's an award? Best music. We got best ongoing. We got best art. Best gameplay. There's one more after that. Best art. Best storytelling. And game of the year. <laughs> That's the big one. It's going to be a fun night. we got lots of fun awards to give out, cool presentations, fun segments. We even got a skit. We haven't even done a skit in God knows how long. Years. Years. Like, <laughs> literally years since the show was done a skit. Um, but anyway, I think like we got to say the name of the show, right? We're oh, part yeah. of TSTV, the only FCC licensed student-run television station, station in, in, the the nation. in the country. Yeah. We verified it finally. It's not just kind of iffy. It's real. Uh, live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Central Time, twitch.tv slash VGHL. Yeah. Dorm channels that I have never... 29.1, is that it? Yep. Lo uh, what's the local one? Never mind, it doesn't matter. But you know what we are? Video Game Hour Live. first award we're going to be giving out today is the award for best art. 2019 was a fantastic year for art and video games. Unfortunately, even though there were so many good ones, only one game can come out on top. Our runners up were Control and Death Stranding. And for the best art of 2019, we're giving it to Hypnospace Outlaw. Yeah. Who are you? Well, who are you? Oh, I'm John. Yeah? Yeah, we're going to go with John today. All right. Yeah, yeah you know, moving up in the professional world. Yeah. Got to use the first name. <laughs> John, what do you like about Hidden Space Outlaw? Please don't call me John. It's the most disturbing thing I think someone could call me that I've known for a period of time. <laughs> <laughs> someone switched it from Chase. Oh, it'll kill me. Um, what do you like about the game? Yo, I love that 90s, like, weird, mm -hmm. like, early internet aesthetic that it has going on. Almost, like, perfectly due to T. At the same time, it's a fake 90s where this is a virtual... So, like, the idea is this browser is in a virtual reality headset mm -hmm. that you put on when you go to bed. And you can get beef brain from using it, as we all know. And the idea is you're just in there and you're a cop um, searching for copyright infringement. Yeah, you're, oh, okay. look, you're looking for those hypnospace outlaws because the browser is called hypnospace. Ooh. Yeah. And um, the reality is you're, like, taking down, like, copyright infringement and looking for bullying... Mm -hmm. Uh, by Zane, a 14-year-old on the website. You know what, that tracks with the real internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, like, good, and <laughs> but bad, and all the right way. It's, like, all the way, like, you remember, go, oh, that's bad. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And you know, we're, like, bad. Nice. Like, it's perfect. It's, um, Zane sucks. He's got rockin' too. He's coming on, look at him right there. He's got guns, fire. There's his face. <laughs> Zane rocks. I mean, it's just... It's just so perfect. Why is this not the way internet works now? <laughs> because it only got worse. It only got worse. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, if you ever spent time on, like, have you ever booted up, like, an old, mm -hmm. like, yeah. 3.1 Microsoft Edge? And by that, they, when they called it just Microsoft. Yeah. And, yeah. Explore, and you just went through. They still have some of these are still up. You can still find these. They're incredible. Just artifacts of time when people thought that was the coolest. And the answer was they were so right. <laughs> And but also so wrong, and we were also so wrong moving forward. So it's good. Yeah. So do you think like people, younger people especially, who know the internet as it is now, will appreciate this game as much as we do? Or no, I I definitely do not think they will appreciate it. Like 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 appreciate that kind of like almost like the artistry of bringing back the specific like like 
this is how it really looked. Yeah. This is just mm-hmm. how the internet was. There's no the jokes are, are are real and funny. That's where I think people could get a, a real appreciation from. I think this is like a legitimately funny game, with legitimately weird and and super like funny humor and then like a really in depth backstory that gets like pain, like almost like slowly rolled out. If you dig deep into Hypno Space, you know you really go through really, like really going through instead of just like looking at Granny Cream's hot butter ice cream and yeah. putting that music on loop and just having a you know it's a pretty good song taking down the putting down those criminals. Um, <laughs> But if you just like if you look at, you can like find like a really interesting story, and also have a really fun kind of like good humorously told stories of events because once you like do your day of like so like right now I took down the Gooper uh, Gooper infringement which is like a detective fish, that's sort of bad like Garfield, mm-hmm. and but you have to go to the old folks home to do it, and so the day the next day it will reboot after today so this is on the, my laptop I don't have like my full save whatever. Um, after a full debt, you'll come back. It'll be like, oh, next day, and they'll be all over the old folks' page home, which is like called like the um, back in the good old. They'll picture like, do you guys remember the good old days? It's like the home page, pretty much. And it'll just be like, oh, everyone's really mad at Hypno Space because he took down Gooper, so they'll all have like copyright infringement. Gooper, you have to go and give. So like, freedom of speech, keep my Gooper free. <laughs> and it's so good. It's like 55 year olds like they took down my first creator's picture of Gooper, which I did for Hypno Coins, so I could buy that beef pack. So I have the beef mouse clicker. You know all the good things you can do. Nice. With the like, future. I feel like there's a weird thing with beef in this game. Yeah. yeah I feel uncomfortable the more I hear there's, about Well, it. there's a foodies web page. <laughs> I mean, I'd be into that. Yeah, well, that's what it is. You're like, it's like Beepo's beef. And you go there and he's, you can buy some of Beepo's beef. It's something like that. Uh, pull up, can we pull up the beef? Is this? Is, there you go. Can we pull up the beef? Is this the dark web? <laughs> no. This, <laughs> this is the lightest web we had. I forgot what it was. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bopo. Sorry, you're not the Bopo. Bopo's fine meats, and you can and you can download some of his fine meats, and he's got all the tags. So if you ever look up, like if you're like, what's up? You can just type in random things, see what you get. So you can do like ketchup. This would pop up, and only this because no one else is talking about ketchup except for Bopo and, oh, okay, pop, so and his fine meats. Yeah. So like a search engine. The yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a search. Yeah, take yeah, you to it places. Funnels you. Yeah, and there's a lot. Of, and it just gets like really weird. So like the hypnos, like their homepage itself is like, hey, here's all these things, of like mm-hmm. here's how this could help like, er, like early investor stuff. And it's like really funny because it just reminds you of like really early Facebook or MySpace in some ways, or people trying to like grasp the idea of the internet when yeah. no one understands how it's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just like really, it's really clever in that way where it's like the obvious jokes of like here's. <laughs> Bopo's meat, which is just funny because Bopo's a funny name, and you're like, yeah. he's like, come get my fine meats, and you're you're into it. Um, but there's like this like weird level of like really biting satire about like this whole thing, like the whole idea of this game eventually gets like shut down, or this whole internet browser gets shut down, and why it gets shut down is like this whole like really clever and dumb joke on like rushing technology and not knowing what to do <laughs> with it, and then it just, you, then you like, eventually just become like a, a person who has a way back machine and is just archiving it. That's the end of the game, is you're just someone archiving all this data. It's really funny. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I like, it's all like, um, I think like the, I don't know if it, it's not satire, it's just pure comedy, it's just sitting in your face with it. Yeah. But it's yeah. just like, that, like describing how that internet is, is is really funny to me, and also like just the general level of like, hey, here's a psychic healer on the internet, and you're like, obviously... You're like I have to hit you with fraud because you're obviously <laughs> causing fraud and viruses through your website. Yeah, I've it's been, so good. I've been there before. Yeah, you know. We've um, all been there. Contacting psychic healers. Yeah, yeah, there's there's listen. I think the music reviews are really funny in it. There's like there's mm-hmm. like a band. Well, obviously, talk about Chowderman yeah, earlier. Of course. Chowderman, who's known for the I, icon. It's Chowderman. either two music types, and I can't remember the name now. It's Chill Wave or Cold Wave. I cannot <laughs> remember what they're called, but it's so funny that like they're like. Yeah, it's Chill Wave. And you go there, it's like an ice cube, and it's like, you want to see some Chill Wave? Chowder Man got into Chill Wave. So all respect. There he goes, Chowder and the Man and the Boys. Looking for uh, trouble. And it was like a terrible ba- album. And this guy just roasts him. And you just <laughs> read this review. Hard Rock Riffs and Unconvincing Masculine. <laughs> yeah, <Ooh. laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> and like, this person reviews music, and you can like read his four music reviews, and they're all fantastic. Like, they're just perfect. Like, all the font is terrible. <laughs> like, the, the tilted page to make it look like, you know, it's, like, really wrote it out. Yeah. Perfect. You know, you can't can't make this stuff up, but you can. They did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chowder Man has a great arc of him getting his friend killed in a helicopter accident and then writing the song Chowder Man Come Home where he talks about himself as Chowder Man in the third person to get back to his roots. So he goes, like, good. It's just good stuff. What are yeah. Chowder Man's roots? 
the hard rock crap like it's so bad the music is so bad in this game but so good because of it <laughs> um because yeah. chowder man is like this crap rock player who gets in the chill wave gets his friend killed he's like i need to take it back to the to the roots of chowder man and so he's singing a whole song about chowder man. he's like chowder man's got to come home but like in this crappy weepy ballad it's so more bands need to write songs in the third person. yeah, oh, right? yeah. About there's not stuff. enough people talking to themselves in the third person in music. Mm-hmm. I'm bringing it back. There's a fake Pokemon called, uh, I think it's called Squishers, and there's a Christian girl that who loves nice. Squishers and just got on the internet, and she's like, I hope it's not satanic or anything. People are saying it is. And as the days go on, she's like, my parents took away my Squishers, it's and I can't so do my drawing. And she gets real sad because her parents found out it was like the same satanic warning, like the Squishers are satanic. <laughs> it's so funny, dude. There's so many good little dumb jokes about people making fake girlfriend pages. Like multiple people, all the guys start making fake girlfriend pages. <laughs> they're so funny. But you can just tell they are. It's like, here's a person making dumb jokes. And you go to the other person's page, and they're Trennis. making like the same jokes. What's Trennis? Oh, that's the new type of tennis. Okay. It's called Trinus. We all know Trinus. Mm-hmm. So like, this is when you're like, you, they don't tell you this is an alternate reality. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, this is whatever. And it's just like, Trinus. We all know Trinus. Yeah. And you're like, I do not know what Trinus is. And you're like, let me explain Trinus to you. And you're like, what is going on? Perfect. And that's, that is this game. You're just going to like surf through your page. You're like, mm-hmm. wait, what's Trinus? Anyway, Trinus will never know what it <laughs> is. No. <laughs> because we have to go to our first couple segments of the night. We yeah. got VHL's personal awards. Because people, they like other things that maybe they didn't win, maybe they didn't deserve to win. Maybe they came out in a different year. We got so a skit. Talk about those. So yeah. skit after that. I'm excited about that. We'll see so you. We'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> I'm here today to talk about the best game that I didn't get to play because I'm salty about it. Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't own a PS4, so I had to get all that sweet, sweet cowboy content injected into my retinas via YouTube. Would I be any good at actually playing the game? Probably not. I'm terrible at aiming, and if you've ever seen me play a combat-related game with a controller on this show, you know that I'm terrible with controllers. But there's just... Something about being able to personally steer your horse and crash into the tree yourself. It's just, it's an experience that I crave. But for now, I just have to settle for living vicariously through hours long videos of somebody riding a horse. So I spend a lot of the year playing catch up on games of the past. And my favorite game that I played catch up with this year is Hollow Knight. Um, the atmosphere, like when I first played the game, the atmosphere was very haunting, I think, and I adored that about the game because while like it was very creepy because like you're just, you're a bug living with other bugs and fighting other bugs and there's lots of bugs and I don't like bugs, um, it's still very interesting because like they found a way to make it where it's kind of creepy, like there are definitely some sections of the game that freaked me out. But at the same time, you still want to explore and find everything. So this game deserves the award for most regression I've ever seen before in a game. The game I'm referring to is Dead by Daylight. One thing that Dead by Daylight is exceptionally good at doing is fixing stuff that isn't broken. So for instance, the audience will say, hey, hitboxes are, you know, they're kind of wonky because I'll be out of the pallet or I'll be way over the pallet or I'll be way over a window and I'll get hit and I'll go down and then I'll get hooked and die. Well, the developers will see that this is a problem, but they won't fix it. So instead they'll be like, you know what, we need to work on this killer which isn't broken, or we need to fix this little perk that works just fine. And then the whole audience is like, yo, this is still broken, and they don't listen, and they just keep making it worse, and it's just sad times for everybody who plays the game. Hello, I'm Noah, and I've decided to highlight one of my personal favorite games of 2019. This game reads like a huge novel, and no RPG or game has engrossed me to its world this much since the Mass Effect trilogy. I'm talking about Disco Elysium. The concept of you playing as a detective with amnesia in a world that mimics ours is very engaging. Even though the world you explore is small in size, every area is packed with plenty of new and interesting things to interact with, as well as new people to have a chat with. You also acquire thoughts at certain points in the game that allow you to open up new possibilities for you to explore and new ways to act around each character. Your journey in trying to uncover your character's past while trying to solve a murder with intrigue and deception makes for one of the best gameplay experiences I've ever had.
Welcome to the Game Awards 2020. I am Jeff Keighley, and I'm so, so happy to be able to say that my best friend in the whole world, Hideo Kojima, is here with us today. Come on, Hideo. Get over here. Come on, give me a hug. Peek me some. Welcome back to the Game Awards, and I'm very excited that my best friend and now new roommate, that's right, we're living together now, it's very exciting, Hideo Kojima is here. Come on, Hideo. Come on in. Hey, give, me a big, give me a big hug. You know what? A little bit more. A little bit more. All right. Let's keep up. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very happy to announce that the winner of the first ever God Amongst Men Award is my best friend and lover, Hideo Kojima. Come on. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be able to have a reveal this year unlike anything we've ever done before. And to do that, I'd like to introduce father of my child, Hideo Kojima, and our son, Hideo Kojima Jr. I'm so proud. Our beautiful boy. Welcome to the Game Awards for this year. I am Mrs. Hideo Kojima, and I am utterly thrilled to be able to bring out my son, Hideo Kojima Jr., to reveal the first look at his first game, Metal Gear Solid Plasma, ex coming exclusively to the Subway $5 foot long dodecahedron this fall. I'm so proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Game Awards are a sad one, as I just recently had to say goodbye to my best friend and love of my life, Hideo Kojima. Uh, we will sorely miss him every day at these awards and throughout my life. He made my life a much better, happier place. And if you would, I would like to take the next few minutes to look back on the legacy of this gaming icon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Interaction is what separates video games from all other art forms. So we wanted to recognize the games that we feel went above and beyond this last year to give players in, uh, engaging ways to interact with the world around them. The runner-ups were Baba Is You and Slay the Spire. And I'm dapper to say the winner for best gameplay of 2019 is Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. We're back. Hello. Who are you? I'm Noah. What do you like about Sekiro? <laughs> well, first off... Get right into it. Yeah. No hesitation. So, posture system. It's a great addition mm -hmm. to any of the other From Software games, so it has a, a new way for you to beat every What's a posture enemy. system? Explain to me. Okay, so, like posture over? system no. is basically kind of like a stamina meter, mm -hmm. almost, but... The, the way you build it up is that you can parry and block your enemy's attacks, so it builds up their posture meter. Mm -hmm. So when you break their posture, it leaves them open to a death blow or or like a finishing move, and that'll either like cut like a, a lot of health off of them or just completely kill them outright. Mm. So instead of you having to just dodge, 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 wait for them to attack and dodge mm -hmm. and then stab them a bunch until their health goes down you can now try to actually get into the combat and try to parry all their moves so it's sort of really incentivizing you to play yeah. more yeah, aggressively it, it is very much incentivizing you to play more aggressively and i think uh the shinobi prosthetics are really awesome addition to the game as well yeah, he's got like a robot arm yeah so so you can have like a flame arm you can have a, a shurikens so you can hit them that's awesome range. You can also have an, like a, a giant hook. swinging mm. axe. There is a grappling hook, but you don't you don't really use that in combat too much. Yeah. There is one mm. boss. There is one boss that lets you use it. It's mm -hmm. like a guy who's like a shogun general who's on a horse, and he charges at you with a ginormous spear, and every time he mm. thrusts it at the ground, he just completely shatters the ground. Nice. So, one of the other things about Sekiro that I know is that this game is hard. Like, there's oh, no yeah. two ways around it's, it. It's it's actually pretty much why I consider it to be harder than any of the other From Software games. Mainly really? because, one, it's 
it doesn't have multiplayer, mm. so you can't just get Call someone, someone else's help. Yeah. You, can't, you can't get someone else's help. And two, because of the posture system, it also, the same thing applies to you as well. So if your posture breaks, then the enemies can attack you as well and can totally just outright one-shot kill you if mm. you're not careful. Okay, so with a lot of hard games, people are just like, there's hard and then there's punishing. Is mm -hmm. this game like... Would you say it's punishing in a way? Does uh, it like hinder you or like incentivize you to not? Is it a fair it? hard or? I think it's a fair hard, mainly hmm. because the resurrection system that they have. Mm -hmm. So you can you die now, twice. Yes, you can die <laughs> That's twice name. now instead. So uh, if you end up dying in battle, you can res in the middle of the fight again in order to either continue the fight and finish off the boss that's just like at that little sliver of health, or you can say okay i'm not ready for this guy yet i'm just gonna res and then leave mm -hmm. so i can go to my checkpoint so i can get my health back and then maybe i'll go fight a different boss or travel another area so that i can get stronger so i can go and fight this guy again nice nice i still need to play this game i have owned it i cannot believe you this is your game play this, this is my game that's being played but i haven't played it yet i haven't gotten around to it <laughs> Uh, see, the thing is, post game of the year is when I play all the game of the years. That is 100% true. Yeah. Every year? Um, I mean, this is the second year. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's been every so year. So far, Yes, that's true. Um, what are you, Tommy? You, you're big fan of Bloodborne. Do you want to play this? I do, and at the same time, like, no, is it harder than Bloodborne? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, because Bloodborne, I'm at a point where it's like, I don't know if I want to keep going just because it's like, it, it's agonizing to mm -hmm. get through certain parts. And if this game is harder, then it, I don't know, right? Because, like, even this game, like, movement abilities are not really meant for combat, right? It's just to, like, get around, but not necessarily, like, like for the grappling fight. hook arm. Yeah. Well, the grappling hook arm is mainly for, like, getting around, like, buildings and terrain. Mm -hmm. When you're in combat, you have, like, a small, like, dash, kind of, uh, which is, like, a little small, like, dodge. But it's not, like, a dodge roll, like yeah. in the other games. You can sprint. Uh, also away from the enemies if you can but main issue with trying to sprint while you're in combat is that you often have to like move backward mm -hmm. so that ends up causing the animation to like you like you're facing back so you can't so if the enemy starts to hit you from the back yes yeah, so you can't like turn around in time and block you're immediately open yes yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah you running away you're if you're not careful you will be yourself open and end up getting hit yeah, so the system's designed for you to, like, parry, basically. Yeah, it's extremely parry-heavy now. They very much want you to you to parry the enemy's attacks and learn their attacks. Yeah, and that's where I'm going to say, maybe not, because <laughs> I'm I'm all about dodging and running. That's it. I, I will play this game. Uh -huh. I will get to it. Maybe after what I'm playing now. Its but parrying yeah. system is actually a little more lenient than the other From Software Games parrying. Really? So, like, previously it's, like, either, like, 0.33 or less... In other prompt software games, and this game's like either 0.33 or half a second off. So, so, if, so if you're only mm -hmm. half a second off, you will parry their attack. Okay. That's that's how, yeah, that's how accurate you are to the the window of time. Yeah, that's parry. what I was double checking. I was like, for certain games, I know that it's once people are in a certain animation, mm -hmm. once you hit a certain point, you can just parry. The Jedi Fallen Order, I feel like it's three seconds. Really? I mean, it, it depends on the difficulty. Yeah, I guess I played it on the next to hardest. And I never had any trouble carrying anything. Mm. It took me a little bit. I mean, at first, as you get in the hang of it. Yeah. But how are the bosses in this game? Because this is a from software game. It's got to have cool bosses. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The, like, that's like a number one trademark mm -hmm. of them, is having really cool bosses. And this game has them in spades. You have Jinichiro Ashina, who I think is personally one of them. It's either my favorite. What do they look like? Uh, okay. Like so I said, I haven't played this game yet. Jinichiro is like? like a general... Uh, he's the guy on the horse? No, he's earlier? not the guy on the horse. He's, okay. You fight him on the rooftop of a pagoda. And that sounds, that's the, cool. Yeah, so it's, so it's like this square arena. And it's like you, you see like a backdrop of the, the castle. Mm -hmm. And you, you've been basically climbing to this area for a, a large chunk of the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. And he has like a massive bow that he will just stretch out and just shoot you with it. And it will just go right through your body. Can you, can you parry an arrow? You if you slice can, it in half, that'd be so cool. You. you can, in fact, parry it, but you have to be—you have to time it really well. That, that has a small window. Yeah, mm -hmm. it has a pretty small window to parry it. Um, yeah. Then he also has a second phase where he suddenly 
summons a bunch of clouds with lightning in them, and then you have to... He, like, takes off his, like, armor, mm -hmm. and uh, he's all, like, scarred and, like, messed up. So and then he has, like, a lightning channeling through his blade, and he tries to, like, throw That's lightning rad. at you. But yeah. then you get this ability that allows you to capture the lightning in midair and then throw it right back at him. Here's you go. That's pretty cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> lightning, lightning redirection. Uh -huh. Years of watching Avatar prepared me. Yeah, this is honestly kind of awesome. And Like, just a brief question. How much does stealth play into this? Because so far our oh, player has stealth? massacred everyone. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> stealth, stealth's another uh, addition to this game's uh, like gameplay from different from other so from software games. Mm -hmm. Like, you can... Use stealth in order to like pick off smaller enemies, so that and when yeah, you're fighting your way up to more difficult stuff. ones, it's much easier. Oh no! No! Oh. Ah, oh, yeah. and we're back. Yeah, he's alive again because mm. he hasn't died twice. He only yeah. died once. Mm. Exactly. Now, now he's a shadow. Oh, perfect. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that pretty much wraps it up for this segment. Yeah, for the best gameplay. Yeah. yeah. So, really quickly, we're about to go to a commercial, and after that, we're going to wrap up all of the awards that we couldn't, unfortunately, you know, cover in this show. Yes. We, we gave out other awards, but we can't play them all on the couch. And then we have the most important award, the only one that really matters, some might say, mm -hmm. Game of the Year. So, yeah. For best ongoing game of 2019, our two runner-ups were Apex Legends and Battletech, with the award ultimately being given to Destiny 2. We decided on Destiny 2 because we felt it provided a consistent release of high quality content throughout 2019. Following the release of Forsaken, the game saw a steady flow of content with its seasons of The Forge, The Drifter, and Opulence, all leading up to the release of Shadowkeep later in the year. Not only did Shadowkeep contain one of the darkest and most genuinely interesting stories that the Destiny franchise has ever seen, it also brought with it a new raid, dungeon, strikes, and took Guardians back to one of Destiny's most beloved locations, the Moon. Along with releasing Shadowkeep, the base game in Destiny 2 and all first year content also became free to play, allowing more people to jump in and experience the game. All these factors contributed to why we decided that Destiny 2 was the best ongoing game of 2019. Although runners up Fire Emblem Three Houses and Disco Elysium are excellent examples of how to tell a gripping story in video games, our award for best storytelling ultimately goes to Outer Wilds. The discoveries you make about both the lives of those who came before you and about the nature of existence itself make for a truly moving experience unlike any other, in other video game. Throughout your journey, you'll encounter a lovable cast of interesting and empathetic characters that will stick to you long after you finish the game. This is especially impressive because you'll never actually meet many of these characters face to face. The primary mode of interacting with the story is through translating and reading ancient texts that will slowly unfold the lives, loves, and losses of several generations and alien race who will be, feel every bit of real and important as your fellow Hartians who you see in your own eyes. By the time you reach the ending of the game, you'll realize that it truly was about the journey and not the destination. The important part of life is, is the time you spend with the ones you love, according to the Outer Wilds. And because of them, the universe will be a better place in the end. Music in games has an integral role in immersing the player into the world their character is in. Whether it was a soundtrack that's so good you can listen to it casually for hours, or atmospheric tracks that soothe you into the experience, 2019 had a great year for soundtracks. Our runner-ups for best music were Outer Wilds and Pokemon Sword and Shield. But the game that came out on top was Sayonara Wild Hearts. Sayonara Wild Hearts' music perfectly mixed with its unique and colorful art style. Sayonara took its basic rhythm gameplay and enhanced it with a soundtrack full of cheerful pop and intoxicating electronic beats. Sayonara Wild Hearts was a standout game with a soundtrack that enraptured us into the game's stunning world. Thankfully, last year was a great year for games, but this made our job to pick the best one much harder. So we've chosen to make a top 10 list of the best games of the year so we can recognize lots of fantastic experiences. From the bottom to the top, the list is Pathologic 2, Piku Niku, Resident Evil 2, Baba Is You, Slay the Spire, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, Control, and Disco Elysium. And the game of the year for 2019 is Outer Wilds.
talking about my personal favorite game of the year, which thankfully won. And we're here with Czar and Michael. I don't know why this is a good game, you guys. It's it's so someone really say it's good. the game of the year. I, I would say, <laughs> someone yeah. say that. Yeah. The yeah. best game. It's Czar, so pretty. What do you like about it? Well, I went in blind. Like, I didn't mm-hmm. know anything about the, this game. The, the, the right way to play yeah, this game. I agree. Um, it's just like seeing all the planets for the first time, I think, mm-hmm. was really cool. Just because, like, it's a completely foreign solar system, right? Mm-hmm. So, like... You don't know what's going yeah. on. Like, you're just you on a little home planet with your trees, and then you're like, man, system. that thing over there, it's covered in water. What's up with yeah. that? So, yeah, Giant's Deep. That's a planet. That's There's where we're at right tornado. now. Yeah. Oh. That's what we're going into. There's, like, hurricanes <laughs> big, in there. Ooh. Oh, it's, so it's cool. full of water. Oh, it's so cool. Mm-hmm. Like, every single time I think I passed through the atmosphere on, like, Giant's Deep, mm-hmm. I had to, like, take a breath, like, because <laughs> you're underwater. Oh, it's so cool. I always that make sure is... I don't go into Giant's Deep too fast, or else I feel like I'll, like, break into the water yeah. and like, mm-hmm. crash my ship. Yeah. That, oh, if you hit the water hard enough, does it crash? Yeah, well, I did that, and actually, if you hit it extremely hard, like, if you go out of the sur- solar system and then come back you in, just charge you can break it. through the barrier that you normally have to go through the tornado. <laughs> you can just go straight down into the core. That's oh, actually that's really cool. cool. It's I, I always took the tornado down. Yeah, you can, but it, it's just fun to do that sometimes. That's the way you're... The, the game like, supposed leads to you want to do it. Yeah, yeah, I like, appreciate that you can do it that way anyway. Yeah, it's like, or just go into it really fast and just break it. Mm-hmm. It's fine. No, this game is full of so many cool, like, just locations and just, yeah. like, Oh, things yeah. to look at oh, all yeah. the time even on the planets that are just like oh this is just full of geysers and stuff and yeah. it's like no go in the geysers yeah. and there's more stuff to look at a lot of great locations and then there's dark bramble mm. <laughs> dark, dark bramble dark bramble cool it's, it's cool, cool but it will like kill it. you oh, yeah. <laughs> i thought that was one of the coolest things which is why it's cool oh, yeah i, I love those angler fish. it's terrifying oh I hate yeah it. i still get so scared when i go into there because it's so creepy <laughs> i'm surprised you went back because i didn't mm-hmm. you never went back after beating the game, no. After beating the game. <laughs> well, I thought you meant like within the game, yeah. like, never did it. Never, never went oh, there. I saved that for the end, and then I was, it was like, it's oh, over. you're making me go here. It's yeah. Like, oh, ah. Yeah, I replayed the game earlier today and did it, like, nice. in one loop. And yeah. yeah that's... Once you know what to do, because this game, like, there's no, like, progression system. Yeah, it's just, I love that. You like, gain more knowledge of how the world works and mm-hmm. what everything is. So. Like, in other games, you would, like, get an upgraded jetpack or, like, a better Yeah, no, none of this. Nope. You, you start out with the you tool you have for the rest of the game. Like, that's it. Exactly. You get better at flying the ship, and then yes. you know where to go. The, mo- the most things that are, like, gated are, like, certain conversations you have to have until, like, you've been in the loop for a bit yeah other than that like everything else you can do yeah. right off the bat and really the only thing i've really seen from my like limited experience with this game is like get the launch codes at the beginning go wherever and yeah that was yeah it. Uh, and the game's sort of like it's like hey maybe go to the moon it's close it's easy like try out that but really you can just take off go wherever you want you don't have mm-hmm. to go to the moon you see we're reading some text here exactly that's the primary mode of interaction is translating text and it sounds really boring but it is fascinating it's good and I love it so much because it tells you like who the speaker is that like wrote this down, and because they're the way that they write is like conversational. It's totally different yeah. from the way a normal person would write. So you could read the notes they like leave to each other about like, hey, remember to do this thing. Yeah, I definitely remember to do that thing. Or like one of my favorite ones was the this guy was like trying to hint that he wanted to ask this girl out. Yeah. And his, his and her like older brother like knew, and so he just literally spelled it out. I was like. If you want to see her, go see her. She's dumb. She won't realize that's what you're trying to do. <laughs> He's like, okay. And then like, you, then you go there, and the conversation picks up, and you find out like they got together, and they had kids. You Aww. can read their kids' conversations. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I like something about the text I just really like. It's just how it's presented, like how it's in spirals, and mm-hmm. just like spreads out from that. It's just like a really unique way of doing text, but it's still so cool. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. And just, like, all the designs and stuff are based on, like, spirals within, like, smaller spirals yeah. for, like, your alien race and stuff mm-hmm. like that, which is also just, it's it's so cool. It really feels like, wh- while you are a part of that race, I was like, oh, this is, like, well, you're not. so alien, and or they're foreigners. Well, no, yeah, 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 they're, they're different races. Yeah. Yeah. They were in the social system before your race, and so you're trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the whole thing is, like, your race has four eyes, and you were, like, <laughs> uh, evolved from, like, an aquatic species, mm-hmm. and you have a statue of them, and they only have three eyes, and they have fur. And uh, when you talk to one of the guys when you're, like, doing the tutorial, mm-hmm. he'll make note of, like, they have fur. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of beings need fur? Yeah. Yeah, the story of this game and exploring it is it can be wild in what you find, like, a certain order. Mm -hmm. Like, you can find some information, and I'll be like, okay, understand this bit more, but then you just have even more questions about the entire story. Like, I remember 
going about giant steep and the um, pro module yeah that's one of like the biggest parts in the game when you realize the thing that fires every single time you wake up and i remember reading that oh it only ever fired once because it just breaks mm -hmm. and i'm like the way it keeps firing in different directions in different directions like when you wake up, up. shoot off at a different angle yeah and so i'm like so i understand this but it keeps firing but were they here soon were the aliens here like now but they're all dead mm. what's happened and then you just learn so much and it, yeah it's just wild all the things that you learn mm. i remember uh that pro tracking module like realization for me like I d it didn't even register to me that th what the thing exploding over giant's mm -hmm. deep was the pro tracking module so mm -hmm. like when i found that out it was like wait that's the thing yeah i didn't figure that out until late in the game yeah you had, about. you had an interesting experience about the order yeah. of operations yeah i went this. to i think most people probably played it in a very different order than i did because going to giant steve and the pro track module was like the last thing i did in the game yeah. outside of like beat it you go to like the quantum moon or whatever mm -hmm. so because the giant steve when you wake up is the first thing that you see when you wake up at the beginning of the game i was like nah, i'll go somewhere else <laughs> i'll go to this other place where'd you go first I went to, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's the one that has like the volcanic moon that's slowly destroying. Brutal Hollow. Yes. Yeah, Brutal Hollow. I went to Brutal Hollow first. That was the first. I think time. I might have went there first as well. That's and then cool. from there, I spent most of my time on the Hourglass Twins. I spent a lot of time there. And I would, I would bounce back and forth between that and Dark Bramble. Mm -hmm. I was like trying to figure this out. Well, I'm stalled. I can't figure out what this is. I'm going to take a break. Go over here. Try to figure out stuff there. Actually, because like there's stuff to do on your home planet. Yeah. And I didn't get to that until, I think maybe. After was it that one accident you had where the ship left you? I did one time. <laughs> I, I I lifted off and I went to go somewhere, but I turned and like wasn't paying attention, and so I crashed into my home planet. So I like got out to repair the ship, but my autopilot was still on when I got out. So the ship just picked up and launched into space without me towards the destination I'd put yep. in the autopilot, and so I just sat on my home planet watching it just. Get further and further That's away. That's one of my favorite things, walking in to grab, like, a sandwich or something, and Enoch just go, uh... And I was like, was that your ship? And he goes, yep. I was like, guess I'm exploring uh, my home planet right now, then, because I, I can't get anywhere else. Yeah, I had a very similar experience on Brittle Hollow, where I was exploring the Hanging City, mm -hmm. and I look out, and I see a chunk of rock fall down, and on top of it, it's my ship. Oh, sure. I had the same experience. <laughs> I already <laughs> think of myself. I was like, man, I wonder if, like, the programming of the game knows to not drop a piece of the rock that your ship is on. And I turn instantly to see yeah. my ship falling down into the center. That's like, a risky oh. take. It's a little hollow. Yeah, that's... It, cla it clashes in on itself. Oh. Yeah, All right. I, I, it's... Favorite planets. Ooh. I'm going to go with the Hourglass Twins. It's such a... Oh, such it's a... It's cool place. You learned <laughs> a lot of stuff. Yeah, Hourglass like Twins is one, maybe one of the most like lore-heavy places. Oh, yeah. Actually, I guess it's not true. Brutal Hollow's got tons of it. They, it's all got tons of it. Mm. I just love the Hourglass Twins. Mm. Zar? Uh, I would say John Steep, just because mm. Tornado's cool, water cool. Mm -hmm. Also, jellyfish. The jellyfish were so cool. Very I cool. was like... I, uh, Enoch was showing me the location and just was sitting there with the jellyfish and watching them rise it up and down. And I was like, this yeah. is so cool. I mm -hmm. remember like my first time like under the current I was just like, what happens if I touch them? And I tried touching them, and I like saw what happened. I was like, okay, what you if I do it again? It. What if I do it again? And I did it like three times or four times, just for fun. Michael, what's your favorite um, spot? I probably like Brittle Hollow, even though mm -hmm. he's saying how it's extremely dangerous. Also, but it just looks so it's pretty. Cool. It's, it's like cool. all like purple. You got, like and a all hanging crappy. city underneath. Yeah, and I like I kind of like how dangerous it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because every step, everything, every time you walk, your floor just go out from under you. Things you gotta be ready for yeah. anything, mm -hmm. and it also has like the black hole center that then leads out to the white hole at the edge of the solar mm -hmm. system. That's such a cool mm -hmm. this concept. I, I've acci <laughs> I accidentally died by falling into that black hole. Oh yeah, and some, absolutely. Yeah, that's. Then you're like, oh, I guess I'm on the other side of the solar system now, not near anything yep. on my ship. And then having to just like either wait for oxygen to run out, or <laughs> or eventually you can like, if you talk to Gabro on um, Giant Steve, you can learn how to meditate to like just oh, reset yeah. the loop. Nice. I, I don't, did I ever learn how to do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you talk to him after a while, you can ask, like, yeah, hey, I, I definitely talked to Gabbro. If you ask him, how do you stay so calm? He says, oh, I meditate. Like, do you want me to teach you? And if you say, yeah, you meditate, and then the loop just ends. And then if you ever hit pause after that, you there's an option to meditate to meditate until end of loop. Hmm. It definitely I think I easy, probably yeah. meditated the first time. I was like, that was weird, and then yeah. I did it again. It makes it easy for, like, if you're yeah. doing time stuff. Like, with the Hourglass Twins especially, yeah. a lot of the stuff on that is timed because the... The floor, floor works. yeah, because yeah. the floor is right. Passing the sand back and forth. Yeah, the sand's going back planets. and forth. So one is slowly like filling out, and the other one's uh, hollowing out. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't figure out a lot of the puzzles on the hourglass twins mm -hmm. just for the longest time, just because like 
it didn't occur to me that the sand rising and falling was part of the puzzle. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. how come I can't get through here? There's sand. And it's like, what? What's happening? And then, oh, just like the realization that, oh, I'm supposed to wait mm-hmm. or go earlier than I was going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just not, you know, be crushed by the sand. Yeah. Which is a possibility I've seen happen many times. Yeah. <laughs> that place is God, like my so favorite. Scary. There's a sun station. Mm. Oh, Over there, actually, the sun, you can kind of see it. Just, it orbits the sun at extremely oh, close range. Yeah. Which I is, I would say, maybe one of the most important locations in the yes. game. Yeah. Because that's where, like, the game that's does where the its big twist. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we'll be able to make it on this run. Cause it to might the sun be... station? No, probably yeah, not. Yeah, because it might, it'll get destroyed by the time we get there. Exactly, yeah. We're, we're trying to time this to end it so that, spoiler alert, the crux of this game is that every 22 minutes the sun explodes. So we're trying to get to a point where, like, when the sun explodes, we end the show. Because it's nice and poetic. Oh, yeah. It's nice and beautiful. Uh, everything ends, even the show. In the meantime, though, there is one aspect of this game that we haven't talked about. And Nick, I hear you talk about it constantly. Mm-hmm. The music. It's beautiful. Ooh, the music. It's great. Yeah. It's wonderful. Uh, it's got this great, like, theme that uh, every... So, like, everyone on your planet that's a, an explorer out in space have their own instrument that they're given when they leave to go explore the outer wilds. And uh, they'll play their own little thing, and you can actually track them. You have a signal scope that you can hone in, like, oh, that's the guy playing the harmonica, that's the guy playing the bongos, that's the guy playing the banjo. Um, so you can, like, try to find them that way. And... Uh, they all, like, play one part of, like, this overarching song uh, mm-hmm. that you can all eventually, like, play together at a nice campfire. And so you spend, like, just a good moment with your friends listening to the music that you've, like, heard bits and pieces of throughout the rest of the game. And then, like, you know, there's, like, each place, each location has its own, like, theme. And when you're traveling in space, it has its own theme. Like, the Sun Station theme's really good because it's oh, very yeah. intense. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you're right up next to a star. That was the thing about, um, I think, sitting under Giant's Deep or, mm-hmm. like, literally in the water and how just, like, soft and like oh you're underwater now yeah i was like ooh, this is weird it's really chaotic up on the surface then you go down underneath mm-hmm. and it's just, it's just quiet yeah mm-hmm. like especially like under the current because like it's just still like all there is is the jellyfish yeah and that's awesome also part of what made uh dark bramble so terrifying yeah, yeah. there was yeah. no music there's it was nothing so quiet Science. yeah you just see lights in the distance and is it an like, angler fish or maybe Th- those angler fish are like one of my favorite designs for like monsters they like, look so creepy giant, Anglerfish in space <laughs> are oh, definitely a good way to sucked into a black hole. Oh. Unless you make it. Oh, no. Oh. Uh-oh. We'll just die. <laughs> well, we're here now. <laughs> it's got a good view of everything. Yeah. I in general, the whereabouts. first time falling yeah. into the black hole was like I was so terrified. Scared. Yeah, because like you don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, I thought I was gonna die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. Crushes yeah. Mass. And then instantly <laughs> collapse. Instead, mm. you're, it's, yeah. it's a transport. Like, the realization that there's something on the other side, and it's like, oh, mm-hmm. this is how this works. In this game's all about discovery. Yeah. That's why I love it so much. Because, mm-hmm. like, this game also won our Best Storytelling Award. Yes. Even though it's not, like, a strict narrative that you follow. There is a narrative, but it's you're slowly mm-hmm. discovering in, uh, different pieces of the puzzle as you play. So yeah, like, as you go about, you find the story. Yeah, you're learning about it, and, like, there's the overarching story, and then there's, like, little personal stories about, like, these kids that are, like, causing some mischief and trying to get somewhere they're not supposed to, and you can, like, go around and... Mm-hmm find out how these kids did it and what they're doing and how they're going about playing hide and seek or whatever and then mm-hmm. it's overarching like what happened to the Nomai which are the race that are all dead now or gone which is awesome it's very heartbreaking when yeah. you find out what happened it's, it's real like, sad when you figure out how it all when happened I, when I finally got to the point yeah. I'm like this is how it happened I'm like this is really sad <laughs> god no. oh yeah we're at the white hole station so is that just the other end of the black hole yes yes yeah. yeah, like, you fall through the black hole you get teleported here that's they have, nice. like, a special construct that the Namai made. Yeah, because, so, like, like they know what happens. They're like, people are going to fall in, accidents <laughs> happen. So they built a station specifically that's like, if you fall through, you're here now, you can just teleport somewhere else in a little bit. That's convenient. Yeah, because it gets happening to them, so we should probably, like, deal with this. <laughs> what a... I can't imagine, like, finding the text that said all of that and mm-hmm. reading it and go, this is genius. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, also, that these people are having such a hard time not falling in a black hole. Yeah. You know, not not following things can be hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When it's sucking you in, when there's, like, massive amounts of gravity. Yeah, you can, there I are so many times that I try to get it. to yeah. the observatory, mm-hmm. and I'll just fall in. It's yeah, like, happens a lot. Crap. I gotta wait till the next loop to do that. It's like... Mm-hmm. I, the loop system, I think, was... Genius. Yeah. Just because, like, you dedicate each loop to, like, finding out a specific yeah. piece of information. Like, um... 
Yeah. I, all right, I figured out what I have to do. So the next loop, like when it resets, I'm gonna go here immediately, and yeah. I'm gonna do this and find these things. Mm -hmm. Or if sometimes you have to be on the Ash Twin, you're like I'm gonna go here immediately and then stand here for ten minutes <laughs> while I wait <laughs> yeah. for the sand yeah. to get wait lower. The sand then I can do what I need to do. Mm. Get like to the center of the Ash Twin. So yeah. how long was it of playing through loops before you realized how long the loop really was? Ooh. What do you mean? Like, like, it, like it was a 22 minute loop. Uh, the game eventually explains it to you. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yes, it does. It, 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 there's a reason why it's 22 minutes. Ooh, okay. Within the game. Having to do with the Sun Station and yeah. the Ash Twin. Yes. I and uh, uh, the Brittle Hollow, too. And Brittle Hollow. Some okay. stuff there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was, it was just kind of Everything's like interconnected. Hard guessing that it was 20 minutes. Yeah. And I then, mean, like, I read about this game before I played it. I'd mm -hmm. said there's a 22 minute loop. So like, yeah. I knew it was that. But then the game eventually is like, it's 22 minutes, and here's why. Uh, here's what happened that led to this happening. The here's why is so cool. But before you ever realized that, were you just always like frantically like going to places to try and figure I out? I mean, yeah, like it's always it's, uh, I, even before then, like it's always the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's always like I, I gotta I have to do these things this time so that I know next time what yeah. I have to do mm -hmm. and just sort of like step by step figuring it out. The worst thing was like hearing the music cue go off. Yeah. And then realizing yeah. that you didn't have enough time to finish whatever you're doing and just like. Oh, it's like, oh, that the sun's exploding. Oh, guess guess I'm done. Time. Yeah, just yeah. Like, I like I would definitely like spend moments frantically like transcending things in the wall <laughs> that I like barely even read, but I'm like, I gotta scan it so that I have in the so like, ship log, ship log. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so then I can read it when I get out. Yeah. I don't have to because it was hard to get here because some of those like platforming challenges oh, to yeah. get to specific places. Oh yeah. It was yeah. hard to get here, so like I gotta yeah. scan all this now, so the next time I don't have to do it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also wild when you realize that how long the loop has been going for mm -hmm. yeah I, mean, I think that it's like it's going going for like over like nine thousand iterations something like that yeah mm. some crazy amount and you've only been present for however long yeah. you've been playing yeah yeah however long you've been playing it was doing it for a long time before well actually no i don't think it like the loop had been going for that long no it had because i i played through and i realized something early when i played through it today I went to the probe tracking module mm -hmm. on my first loop. Yeah. And that same loop, it tells you that, because it tells you how many um, probes have been shot off. Yeah. The probe that gets shot off on that first loop is the one that f that finds the eye. Yeah. So I'm assuming that's what triggers your like the statues to wake up, and then or the statues for like you and Gabber to wake up, and then you realize that the loop been, that the loop is happening. Hmm. The loop has been happening for that long, but you're just now realizing that. It's happening. Oh, okay. Ooh. I see. Yeah, yeah the, like I played this game and I took it a different, and I <laughs> yeah. took it a different way. Still learning new things. Which exactly. Awesome. Yeah, because I also realized that yeah, Gabro also is the same as you. Where yes. if you go there, Gabro knows. Yeah. Uh, you, no, yeah, but also on it's the first because, loop. It's because of where he is. Yeah. 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 Gabro knows, but he just chilled out. He's just yeah. yeah. He's, he's not worried about it. He's just hanging out, enjoying the waves, getting tossed I remember up. The, yeah, I remember the first time it tossed us up. I looked at him. He's just chilling, mm -hmm. chilling in his hammock. And I was just like, okay. Not a care in the world. Universe is ending. Doesn't matter to him. I was busy yeah. panicking yeah. about getting <laughs> thrown about of the atmosphere. Like I have so many things to do, but not as, enough time. No, yeah. As we wind down, can we get a, just a nice view of the sun? Is it, is it that time? I think we're getting there. It's we're probably getting close. I, I assume that was kind of what he was doing. You know. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Wonder how long. There. No, look, no, it's still red. I it's, think one of my favorite. It's things, near and it ends. Yeah. One of my favorite things about this game is literally as you leave your planet, watching it mm -hmm. shrink. Yeah. Yeah, like and just like the, how different everything is. Um, do you want it now, or do we just want to wait till the? I don't know, up? Tommy. Check what time it is. We're 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 time showing on the fly here. It's fifty two. It's fifty two. It's fifty two. Right, well. No, I think it'll end in like two minutes, for how the timing goes. If we want to wait for it. I mean, I do. It it looks really cool. It does look really cool. It's so cool. Yeah. You're, you're watching Let's just wait for producing it. happen live. Yeah, watching it. Yeah. <laughs> trying to figure out. Let's just watch it. Let's let's watch the end. If of not, the just fly into the sun. I know how long <laughs> it's been going. We like the loop's been going for like 20 minutes now. So yeah. It'll happen like two minutes. Full speed ahead, friend. Let's watch the end of the world together, shall we? Yeah. That's basically how this game ends. Yeah. yeah that is the game. We gotta sing a song because at the end of the game they play a song. <laughs> what song are we gonna sing, Enoch? The intro. The intro. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we all brought our instruments, dun, we could. Dun, 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 I call harmonica. Dun, dun, We're the spoons. I think I could do that. I'll play the banjo. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I was going to say I would whistle. I committed. I said we were going to do it, and I did it. I respect that you committed. Thank you. I don't. Why? Off key. Because you're a much better singer than I am. Oh, I. 
amazingly. Prove good. it right now. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, getting bright red. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's how you know that it's almost over. That, that's about to go out. Becoming a supernova. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sort of. I love how like when you see the sun turning red for the first time, you just recognize it because that's something you learn growing up in. Yeah, like science class. class. Yeah, or yeah. it's just the stars die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They get really like big, so they collapse in on themselves. Mm -hmm. Which is what this guy's about to do. See, yeah, he's getting there. He's getting dark. It's also so spots. cool how they like threw in solar flares in the sun. Oh, and yeah. stuff Unless like Chase that. goes into the sun I, before it. I think he will. I think he's going to land in the sun. Now he's backing it well, up. He's, he's Chase. In, <laughs> it's fine. Chase. He's not in the Chase. ship. He's not in the ship. There's he's nothing not in you the can ship. do about it. <laughs> there we go. That's the show. Yeah. That's the award show. Thank you for uh, bearing with us tonight. It's yeah. been another award show. I'm happy and proud of us. We got it done. Mm. It wasn't too bad. I think it was pretty fun. No, yeah. yeah. I think everyone back in the control room for working really hard, making this happen. Thank you. Uh, Chase over there playing the games, all the floor directors. Mm -hmm. I know we have to get out of here. We spent a little extra time in the game. But thank you. I'm Enoch. I'm Zar. I'm Michael. I'm Tommy. And this is Video Game Hour Live. Bye. I said it right because I was the only one this time. Yeah. <laughs> See? Bye.